Knowing by revelation that there's a living prophet on the earth changes everything. Such revealed knowledge invites one to trust the counsel of the living prophet even if we do not fully understand it. After all, a perfect and loving Father in heaven has chosen the pattern of revealing truth to his children through a prophet. Someone who never sought such a sacred calling and who has no need of our help to be aware of his own imperfections. A prophet is someone God has personally prepared, called, corrected, inspired, rebuked, sanctified, and sustained. That's why we are never spiritually at risk in following prophetic counsel. And there are two realities that are associated with the latter days. The first reality is that Christ's church will be reestablished on the earth. And the second reality is that things are going to get really challenging. The scriptures reveal that in the last days, there'll be a great hailstorm sent forth to destroy the crops on the earth, plagues, wars, rumors of wars, and the whole earth shall be in commotion and iniquity shall abound. Current conditions in the world have caused some to panic. As God's covenant children, we do not need to chase after this or that to know how to navigate through these troubled times. We do not need to fear. The doctrine and principles that we must follow to survive spiritually and endure physically are found in the words of a living prophet. That's why President M. Russell Ballard declared that it is no small thing to have a prophet of God in our midst. God's long-established pattern of teaching His children through prophets assures us that He will bless each prophet and that He will bless those who heed prophetic counsel. So the key is to follow the living prophet. Brothers and sisters, unlike vintage comic books and classic cars, prophetic teachings do not become more valuable with age. That is why we should not seek to use the words of past prophets to dismiss the teachings of living prophets. In the months and years ahead, events are likely to require each member to decide whether or not he or she will follow the first presidency. Members will find it more difficult to halt longer between two opinions. Let us leave a record so that the choices are clear, letting others do as they will in the face of prophetic counsel. Jesus said that when the fig trees put forth their leaves, summer is nigh. Thus warned that summer is upon us, let us not then complain of the heat." End quote. The rising generation is growing up in a time where there are more fig leaves and there is more heat. And that reality imposes a weightier responsibility on the already risen generation, particularly when it comes to following prophetic counsel. When parents ignore the counsel of a living prophet, they not only lose the promised blessings for themselves, but even more tragically, teach their children that what a prophet says is insignificant, or that prophetic counsel can be picked through in a smorgasbord fashion without concern for the resulting spiritual malnutrition. Some parents mistakenly feel that they can relax a little as to conduct and conformity, that they can ease up a little on the fundamentals without affecting their family or their family's future. But if a parent goes a little off course, the children are likely to exceed the parent's example. We cannot be a source of confusion about the importance of following prophetic counsel. It is that very counsel that will allow the rising generation to see the enemy while he is yet afar off, and then they can make ready to withstand the enemy's attack. Our seemingly small deviations quiet neglect or whispered criticisms in response to prophetic counsel may result in our only walking dangerously near the edge of the covenant path. But when magnified by the adversary in the lives of the rising generation, such actions may influence them to leave that path altogether. Such a result is a generational price that is too high. Now, some of you may feel like you've fallen short in your efforts to follow the counsel of President Russell and Nelson. If that's the case, then repent. Begin again to follow the counsel of God's chosen prophet. Set aside the distraction of childish cartoons and trust the Lord's anointed. Rejoice because once again, 
there is a prophet in Israel.